Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer and I want us to look at cease and desist letters and specifically what does the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, what does it actually say about cease and desist letters? And part of the reason I want us to look at this is sometimes there's confusion. So for example, that expression cease and desist is actually not in this particular section of the FDCPA. And there was a judge one time that a consumer wrote a letter to a debt collector and said, I refuse to pay you this debt. And then the debt collector continued to call and write. And so the consumer sues and said, hey, you're supposed to stop communication. And judge said, no, 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 I don't like what you did. You got tricky there. You have to say cease and desist. Well, again, that's not actually in the law. And what's actually in the law is I refuse to pay. That means they cannot communicate with you any further. So let's look at the actual law here. <clears throat> and before we do that, we'll just talk about what is a cease and desist letter. And so basically you're telling that particular collector. So you can't just say, I want you and any other collector that's good. No, you're not allowed to do that. Only this particular debt collector, you're saying, don't contact me again. Now there's a couple of disadvantages. Number one, they may sue you. Now, for that debt collector to sue you, they have to own the debt, at least in Alabama where I practice. I think in most states, a debt collector who sues you must own the debt. But whether they own it or don't own it, they could always send it to the original creditor and say to the original creditor, hey, I want you to sue because they cannot call you. They can't write you. Okay. Now, another possibility is they'll get your cease communications letter and then they'll just transfer it to another debt collector. And then you have to start all over, okay? Because remember, cease and desist is only for that particular debt collector. Now, here's a big advantage besides just the fact that they'll leave you alone, is if they continue to write you and try and collect, if they continue to call you, then you can sue them for money damages under the FDCPA. And we'll look at the few exceptions where they are allowed to communicate with you. So let's look at the actual section. This is section 1692C, and then it's subpart C of the FDCPA. So it says, if a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing, and that's critical, it can't be over the phone, it's got to be in writing, that the consumer refuses to pay a debt. So let's just read it like that. Notify a debt collector in writing, consumer refuses to pay a debt, the debt collector shall not communicate further with the consumer with respect to such debt, except, and then there are three exceptions. Now, you can say, I refuse to pay this debt, or, notice that, or you can say, I wish that the debt collector would cease further communication with me. Same thing. So again, there is no nothing in the statute that says cease and desist. There's, I refuse to pay, and number two, cease communications with me. Now, if you do either one of those, the debt collector must stop communications except, and here are three exceptions. Number one, just to write you and say, hey, we're not going to communicate with you any further. Uh, we're, we're stopping all debt collection efforts. Okay, well, that's a letter you would want to get. Number two, that either the collector or creditor may invoke specified remedies. So they might say, hey, uh, we may credit report on you. We may sue you. We may do this. We may do that, which are ordinarily invoked by such debt collector or creditor. So they're not saying we are going to do this, but they say we may do this. And whatever they list has to be something that they typically will do. So if they've never filed a lawsuit, they can't say, hey, we may sue you. Because that's not something they ordinarily do. Look at number three here. Or they can say, hey, the debt collector or the creditor intends to invoke a specified remedy. So it's not just that we may do this. Remember, number two is if they say we may do this, it has to be something they ordinarily do. Number three, it doesn't have to be something they ordinarily do. They just have to say, hey, we're specifically intending to sue you or do this or do that. And then here's just a reminder, such notes from consumers made by mail, which 99% of the time it will, 
notification shall be complete upon receipt. So you got to send the stuff by certified mail so that you can prove that they received it. Now, here's some sample language, and I'll give you just two little short sentences, and you can pick one. Now, you can make the, you know, the letter longer. You can put other stuff in there. But number one, I refuse to pay you on any debt that you claim to have on me. So that would fit, right? Go back. If you notify the debt collector in writing, the consumer refuses to pay a debt, okay? Or I wish for you to cease all communication with me on any debt you claim to have on me. Well, that's this or part. If you say the consumer wishes debt collectors cease further communication with the consumer. And then I have in here, no matter what you do, send it by certified mail. Keep a copy. So keep a physical copy and a digital copy. So literally print out. If you're going to sign the letter, that's fine. Sign the one that's going and sign the one that you're keeping. Stick that in a folder. Keep a digital version. So in other words, scan it in as a PDF. Put that up on Google Drive, Evernote, OneDrive, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you have a physical and a digital version of this. And then when you get the green card back, or if you're just tracking it through the USPS, when you get the, the sort of the digital, ugh, easy for me to say, digital signature, in other words, the scan of somebody signing it, make sure you keep that because if they get the letter and then, you know, I wouldn't sue if it was like the very next day a letter goes out or a call goes out, but certainly two days after that, anytime after that, if they continue to communicate with you other than those three exceptions, remember, they've got these three exceptions here. If they communicate with you any other way on any other matter except these three things, then I would look at suing them. Now, keep this in mind. If you send a letter to them and say, hey, I want you to cease communication, and then the next month they get a new debt on you, then I think they've got a good argument that they can communicate on that one. So you just do the same thing. Send another letter saying, hey guys, any debt I refuse to pay or I want you to cease communication. If they continue to communicate, then you look at suing them. So appreciate you guys watching this and I will catch you in the next video. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.